Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to Carry On Accessibility. Today, we're going to be talking about the Apple Vision Pro. I've had it for about almost a week now, and I unboxed it with the COA members on Tuesday, and I've had an opportunity to try it out, and I think I've drained the battery about three to four times and you know the battery life is about two hours so you know I feel that I can share my first impressions today um let's see let's make sure the stream is working okay can you guys hear me hopefully everybody could hear me Let's see here. Um, oh, got it, here we go. Okay, it so looks like everybody can hear me, so hopefully you guys can, um, and hopefully everything's working. So anyway, um, let's see. So I'm planning to make a lot more content on this, but I really wanted to give my first impressions and let people ask their questions. Uh, while I work on the review video. And so for context, I did purchase this myself on my Apple card. So <laughs> this is not sponsored by Apple. Apple did not send this to me and they would probably be happy that I didn't do that. <laughs> and I have a lot of notes and I have some topics that I want to cover. Um, and after the stream, I will go back and make sure to add chapters uh, to this video. And I'll also probably um, post some videos on the Caring Accessibility or COA Moments channel uh, that will be clips from this live. So if you are more interested in the short version of things or um, shorter clips, make sure to check out and subscribe the COA Moments uh, to this COA Moments channel. Uh, and if you have questions, drop them in the live chat and do me a favor. If it is a question, start with like question mark, just so that that will pop out to me. And it's pretty hard to uh, keep track of the chat, um, especially when I don't usually have somebody helping me. Okay, so it looks like I do have confirmation that people can hear me. So thank you, everybody. <laughs> I wish I was sponsored by Apple. I would most definitely tell everybody if I was, though, but I am uh, absolutely not. So let's just get started. The number one question is, does this device have accessibility features? And the answer is yes. There's a lot of major vision accessibility features. You may have seen uh, Apple released information about voiceover in Zoom, and also Sam from the Blind Life had some great content out about the accessibility features. Um, and so voiceover, yeah, it works. We'll get more into that later. Uh, Zoom also works. Um, and again, I will explain more about that uh, later on in the live stream. And no, unfortunately, you cannot zoom onto the world around you like a magnifier. For example, like the iris vision or the eSight, you cannot use it for this purpose right now. There's no way to do that. I um, There's no magnifier app. Uh, there's no way to just zoom in um, in your environment. There's no apps out there where you can use the camera and zoom in on, on that. No, it, it just does not work, which is a really big disappointment, I think. Uh, and we'll get more into Zoom later. And of course, there's uh, spoken content. So it'll announce what you type or what's on screen without using voiceover. And there's other... Um, there's other vision accessibilities too, like increasing the contrast, bold text, larger print, display size, and you can have up to like an extra large display size. And I just wish that Apple would bring display size to, uh, 
to iPads, and right now there's only like a, a limit to that, and it would be great if they could bring that over to uh, similar to Android. Uh, it can get pretty big, not as big as I would need it, um, but that's where Zoom would come in. There's other uh, accessibility features like pointer control. So the device is supposed to track your eyes and that's what everybody is super impressed with how well it can track people's eyes. And, um, you know, I have nystagmus uh, or when you're blind, that doesn't work. So you have pointer control, uh, you know, voiceover is another story, right? It has its own uh, control, but, you know, if you're using Zoom or just or you, you can even just use text size and larger display size, you know, you can change it to head or your wrist, your index finger. Uh, those, they work. Um, it is a little bit finicky because you're also using your hands uh, to do gestures and you're also using your head. If you're zoom using Zoom, you're also using your head uh, to move around and to pan around. And you're also using your head when you're in explore mode for voiceover. So it can get kind of confusing with that. Uh, they also have sound actions where you can make like different sounds like a click or like a cluck or a shh and different sounds like that and associate it to actions. There's dwell control. So if you can just stare at an item and after a set amount of time, it will click into it. Uh, there's assistive touch, which is very similar to the iPhone and iPad assistive touch. It has a little icon and you can program it to do different things. There's voice control and sound recognition uh, and things like that and a lot more. And we'll go back to my experience with those accessibility features, like I mentioned. Um, but first, I just want to talk about what is this device exactly? You know, I, I've been getting a lot of questions um, on social media and even trying to explain it to my family, like, what is this? What does this device do? <laughs> uh, just imagine, it's, it's a headset, right? It's, you can even see it as like a VR, AR headset if you're familiar with that. And if you're not, you know, which a lot of people aren't, um, imagine really big, heavy scuba goggles, scuba diver goggles kind of things that they, they fit on your face, but they have a, this particular one has a screen on the front and in the inside it is, um, screens for each eye. There's one screen for each eye. Um, and uh, you put it on and you look at the screens. They're just a few centimeters away from your eyes. And it has cameras all around. It has about 12 cameras inside to track your eyes and outside front facing, side facing, downward facing to capture the world around you. And then it shows that to you inside the screens, in front of your eyes. And it's kind of like a remake of reality. And this is what Apple calls pass through. And Apple doesn't like to call it augmented reality or virtual reality. They call, like to call it spatial computing. And uh, then you can open these floating windows, like little apps. Imagine on your computer, you can have little windows of different apps, except it's just in your actual space and you can make them really big or smaller. But of course, the Apple way, there's a limit on how small or big uh, you can make these windows. Um, yeah. They also have different types of apps like Disney Plus, there's Apple TV, there's the Photos app, uh, you can, there's a Notes app, FaceTime, I'm sure there's email, I can't remember if there is, I haven't seen it. Um, and there's about a thousand apps that are optimized for the Vision Pro now. And then apparently, is it millions or hundreds of thousands of iPhone or iPad apps? But they're, um, they're called compatible apps, so they're not optimized 
for the Vision Pro. I, but can I really tell the difference between like a Vision Pro optimized app and one that isn't? N not, not very, not really. There are elements um, and menus that expand or show up when your eyes or your pointer is focused on them. Uh, so I guess in a way those are what's being optimized, which can actually be harder when you're low vision uh, to see those little things. Um, you can also use it as a display for your MacBook. And so instead of having maybe a 15 inch 13 inch MacBook Air or MacBook Pro, you can make it up to, I don't know, an estimated 75 inches. And then of course you can still zoom into that if you need to. Um, I don't have a MacBook, so I wasn't actually able to test that though. I was tempted. I was tempted. I already got the Vision Pro. Let me go ahead and get a MacBook and just try that out. But I uh, decided against that. Let's see here. Okay, so I see that there's a lot of people in the chat um, talking and I will get back to the chat and catch up in there in, as soon as I share some of my notes here and some of the things that I, um, my experience. So I just also wanna describe the Vision Pro for some of the uh, non-visual users out there. So there's a screen up front, so it's black. This is some kind of lenticular display or something fancy. I can't see this display. It's pretty difficult to actually see anything. It, it, it kind of makes me think, it's a kind of washed out. It's very, very reflective. Um, and it's very low contrast. You're trying to, um, it kind of has like this weird 3D effect that I can't really see, but I can tell that they're trying to have it that way. And this is where your eyes are supposed to be remade so that people can see you from the outside, kind of like how you can see the world around you, even though your face is being blocked by this thing. And people will be supposed to be able to see you and your eyes, and you can make eye contact, supposedly. Um, I uh, did not test that. <laughs> um, and it, it just is really reflective. Now, it's, it has a lot of metal all around it. Uh, I believe it's aluminum. Don't quote me on that. There's a two buttons. There's um, just two buttons on this. There's a digital crown very similar to the one that's on the Apple Watch. It's slightly bigger. You can push it or you can rotate it. And then there's like a longer uh, ovally button on the left side when you're wearing it. And that is to capture. So you can take pictures or um, spatial images or videos uh, from the Vision Pro. Then on the top, there's like uh, these big open holes here. Like I think these are the exhaust vents and uh, they sometimes blow hot air, uh, not too hot. Um, it's not, it's, it doesn't really run hot, uh, at least not very. On the underside, uh, and there's also cameras all over the front here. I can't see them, but there's like four to six or more on the front right there. Uh, on the bottom, there's uh, two main cameras that I see that are downward facing that helps with capturing your gestures. And then there's like these little holes. And I, I guess that's also for the cooling system. And then it comes with this light seal and it's magnetic. It attaches to the uh, Vision Pro, like where the inner screens are, interior screens, where your eyes are gonna be. And then there's also a cushion that's magnetic that can come off. And some people take that off, um, but it's already not very comfortable. I'll get back to that as well, uh, that I, I can use any bit of comfort that I can. So on the sides here, there's like this rubbery texture. Um, 
I don't know if this is plastic or silicon or something, and they're two ovally shaped um, speakers, and they go right next to your ear or right above it. Um, and the speakers are pretty great. And the spatial audio, that is fantastic on this thing. Then we have, I think this is called a solo band. It's fabric and it's, it's something that can stretch, but it also has a wheel here that you can turn kind of like a really big digital crown. <laughs> and you can turn that to tighten or to loosen it. Uh, and then on the left edge, we have a wire. You must have it connected to the battery at all times for it to be able to work. And it did take me a while to figure out how to uh, put the battery in or to the wire in because this is not just like a thing that you plug. You have to put it in, match up the right spot, and then push it to in, make it make sure it fits, and then turn it until it clicks into place. It's, it's like this weird thing. In the inside of the bands, they have the, these little pull tabs and it's actually really easy to remove the band. That one I will say, really great job on that Apple. Um, that That's really easy to replace the band and it comes with this band as well as another band. Um, they say the other band that has a strap at the top is more comfortable. I was, I played with it for about half an hour and I could not get it to be comfortable. So I went back to the solo band, even though this isn't, this isn't great either. <laughs> All right. So that's um, a little bit about that. Uh, let's see. We talked about the speakers, the band, the, the wire. Um, okay. Apple has a 30 minute session for new Vision Pro users. Um, and they even sent me an email about it. And I decided not to because I'm gonna figure this out myself, right? That's my mentality. Um, but I would recommend it. If you get a Vision Pro and you decide to try it out, um, <laughs> I would really recommend it because I had some trouble. Um, yeah. <laughs> so for setup, as soon as you um, press and hold the crown, it'll eventually turn on after a while, you'll start hearing music, and it will even announce, okay, triple press the crown to turn on voiceover. I really like that. You know, Apple isn't afraid of announcing that to, to users, and that's great, you know, even if they are a lot of them are going to be sighted users. They still have that for everybody. Um, there's no way to turn on Zoom at setup. And if there is, I couldn't see it. <laughs> it was, I did, ended up just using um, voiceover, especially for setup. And Siri still can't turn on Zoom, which is disappointing. But neither can Google Assistant. And I wish that, you know, they would integrate that. So after turning on voiceover, the tutorial was fine. Um, but you need to make sure that you position your hands the right way. You kind of have to make sure that your hands are like in a C position. Like you're making a C. Make sure you don't put your hands together and pinch and do all these things because it is pretty sensitive uh, and it's really hard. I was, um, I couldn't believe how many times I kind of accidentally um, pinched and it would accidentally move around. The focus would change. It was, it was really hard to get uh, accustomed to not doing that because you know, it's natural. You kind of move your hands around. And even if you're not pinching, if you're just kind of like making a fist or, um, you know, just moving your hands, sometimes it will register as pinches. So that took a while for me. Uh, also, the first time that I went through a setup, I actually accidentally dismissed the tutorial and I didn't know how to get it back up again. Um, so that was the first time around and um, it would have made my life 
so much easier if I was able to go through the whole tutorial. Um, I ended up having to go, <laughs> I tried to look on the Apple um, website and look for the voiceover. I found some really good information there, but it wasn't until I actually watched Sam's video and figured out how to use the explore feature. Uh, and, I'll, and I'll get back again to that. And so my, my life was really hard because I actually ended up the first time using manual setup. I don't know exactly what led me to there, um, but I've tried setting this thing up about three times. Uh, I Yes, I erased, I fa basically factory reset it twice. Uh, the second time, there's a way that it's supposed to work. So you put it on, you get your iPhone out. Um, you know, you have to enter your password because <laughs> it, you can't use face ID since you have the headset on. Right. So I had to enter my password and it shows a QR code. It says, Oh, vision pro continue. Uh, if you want to set up your vision pro and then it generates a QR code or their version of a QR code, uh, which is, it looks slightly different. And you're supposed to scan that with the Vision Pro, but it would not scan. And I'm like, maybe it's because it's my eyes, because uh, I have nystagmus. Maybe it's just not doing it. I took it off, put it back on. I tried to uh, stop the setup, uh, restart it, to restart my iPhone. Uh, this was the second time around. And then I asked my mom, mom, come here. You know, sh she can see, she sighted, you know, her eyes don't move all over the place. So I had her try it out. And nope, it would not register the QR code. It's like, look at the QR code on your iPhone. No, it did not work at all. So I ended up shutting down the Apple Vision Pro, um, like restarting it. I did that twice before it actually registered the iPhone. I don't know, maybe it's just me, um, but that was my experience. The first time I did it manually and I had to type my Apple username and ID, which was an absolute nightmare. I think I was on uh, the COA members live stream, the members only live stream for almost two hours. And it took me a long time just to enter my username and password. <laughs> uh, the third time was, uh, I'm pretty sure it was the third time. It was a charm. You know, it actually worked. I was able to scan it with my iPhone. And, you know, when these seamless experiences, the way Apple wants them to happen, when it works, it's actually really, really great. But when it doesn't work, it is extremely frustrating. Um, so I had a video uh, reacting to the Vision Pro announcement. And, uh, some of my questions were that would optic ID, it's supposed to just scan your eyes instead of face ID, right? Um, that does not work. Not for me. Uh, because I have nystagmus and I guess I just can't look at it. It cannot uh, scan my eyes. Um, there's a way to set up eye tracking. It will still track your eyes or whether or not you set up eye tracking. I uh, That also does not work for me. <laughs> and yet it still tracks my eyes. And there's actually no way that I find found out to turn off eye tracking altogether. And it's a little frustrating. Um, but I, I finally did get it set up, and I, I have to say my biggest drawback before we get into all the accessibility features uh, that I tried out, the biggest drawback is the comfort, okay? As soon as I took it out of the box, all the members here, you know, you heard me say it, this is heavy. I just touched it, it was heavy. I gave it to my dad. He's like, what is this? You want me to put it on my face? It's so heavy. <laughs> Everybody said it was really heavy. Um, my sister 
and uh, my niece and nephew came over today uh, and they were also complaining about it, you know. Uh, one is a teenager, uh, a younger teenager, you know. The weight is very, very noticeable, especially because all the weight is at the front, okay? Um, all the weight is right at the front. <sighs> and I would, it really gave me headaches. Um, I, it's not comfortable. You could position this any way you want. You can tighten or loosen it. A lot of the time, I will loosen this and then just hold it. Hold it, try not to block the cameras, and I will hold it while it's on my face because it's, it's just very uncomfortable, especially after you wear it for a few hours. Okay, I, I again, I've used this for two hours straight around that um a few times <laughs> and it is not comfortable at all it's also not fun to have a wire and a battery you know typically i have my phone in one pocket and i have you know another phone in my other pocket that's how i typically roll uh and I didn't know, I had to take out like one of my phones and put it in my pocket. But you know, it's been a long time since I've used wired headphones. I used to use them all the time when I was in high school. Uh, but this is worse. This is so much worse because it's a 3,500 plus device and you're trying to be really careful with it. You know, it's expensive and the battery itself is not it's not small. It's almost as big as my phone and definitely much thicker. So this is the S24 and this is the battery. You know, it, it is smaller, but it is thicker and definitely much heavier. It's not, it's not fun to have a wire. I, I did not like that. Um, but even with the wire, it's really the comfort that really got to me. My, my nephew said, oh, I'm like, do you want to try it again? And he's like, <laughs> what did he say? Uh, you want to put a, um, um, I can't remember exactly what he said, but it's basically like a cement block on my head, <laughs> something like that, <laughs> a cinder block. He's like, you want to put a cinder block on my head? Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> it really is not fun. Uh, there have been so many tech YouTubers and people who have reviewed this and they have agreed with me uh, and that it is just not, it's not comfortable. But I will move on um, and we'll talk about the accessibility on this thing. VoiceOver. VoiceOver took some time to get a hang of the gestures. You have all new gestures and just even the idea of making hand gestures in thin air takes time to get used to. You put your index finger and your thumb together for next item. You put your middle finger and thumb together for previous item. And those two things are um, it, something that is a pattern, right? And then your ring finger on your right hand, um, that's like a double click. And then there's also, alternately, you could use the index finger and thumb pinch on your left hand. So just those things, those kind of mess with your brain because you know, you're know you so accustomed to double tapping, swiping, so they take a, some time. They're not bad. I, I'm not com necessarily complaining. I'm just say, sharing that you know it takes time to learn them. It takes time to wrap your mind around how to do it and where to position your hands. Uh, today, when my niece and nephew were trying it, they were trying to like tap on the screen that was floating in front of them to try to like activate things. And so, like with voiceover, it just feels like very ethereal. Like you're trying to control something that isn't there, <laughs> and that really takes time. Uh, I mean, I'm still trying to remember and work out all the gestures. 
So there's uh, the rotor. You have to use two hands. So you have to do, oh my goodness, a middle finger on your left hand and thumb pinch. And then at the, while you're pinching that down, you have to use your right hand and then the next and previous pinches uh, to adjust the rotor. And then to actually move by that rotor item, you pinch your index and thumb together and you hold that down and then you do the next and previous. And then to switch between apps, you put your left hand, ring finger and thumb together and then you use the uh, next and previous gestures, pinches on, on your right hand. So one thing I don't like is the fact that I have to use two hands, you know? Um, this is supposed to be hands-free. Uh, and now I have to use two hands. There's, there is like a place where you can customize, uh, your gestures and your pinches. And I, I guess there's like ways that maybe you can do like a single hand mode or something and just adjust that. So that is an option. Um, but it just takes time. Another thing is where you have to gesture, right? You don't have to gesture out in front of you. And actually, if you do it too far, it has a hard time. If you do it way too close to your body, it has a hard time. But if you do it in your lap, it actually does pretty decently. Um, you have to get comfortable with maneuvering and doing gestures like in in the field of view that the cameras have. And sometimes you can kind of find those boundaries when you start like moving around. <laughs> um, the thing is the Vision Pro is very visual. Uh, it's a very visual based uh, operating system. So some of my experiences, it's always recognizing people, four people, three people, you know, it's always doing that. If there's people walking around uh, in front in your field of view, it's always going to say something. And that gets pretty annoying. It will also announce floating windows, right? So they are actually in space floating around. Um, and if you turn your head the audio will change. It's actually pretty cool. And voiceover will change how it sounds based on if you're looking at the app or if it's to your left or to your right, or if it's even far away from you. The thing is like, if you turn your head to another app, it will announce that app. And then, um, yeah. And you know, if you move your head the other way, you know, it can, it'll like sound like the focus left the window but the focus will always remain where you are and even if you turn your head so say i'm in settings and it says settings right and then it, i'm navigating through there and then i turn my head and i have safari open on my right so it'll save safari if i'm looking at it or if my head is turned in that direction so it makes me kind of feel that the focus would shift there but it doesn't if i do the gestures like next and previous, then it will still be on settings. Um, when eye tracking is on, voiceover gets kind of finicky. If you have nystagmus, I would really recommend that you change your pointer control settings if that's uh, an issue for you as well. Um, yeah, it just really does a hard uh, it's it's difficult um it will just randomly move the focus sometimes with voiceover like just based on my eyes it's not supposed to do that but i think it's just very confused because of how much my eyes move uh i was able to use zoom and voiceover but just like the windows the voiceover focus doesn't follow zoom now you can uh, use explore mode. That's where you pinch and you hold your uh, right index and thumb together. And then you move your head around and voice. It, it's kind of like explore by touch. You don't move your hand around though. You move your head. Um, 
let's see here. I felt like there was a lot of pinching and swiping. It's like, you know, if you're not using Explorer by touch, um, or what do you call it? Touch and drag on iPhone, you know, you just keep having to swipe and swipe and swipe and swipe. And that gets kind of tiring. It really does. Uh, you, and then I feel that it's a lot easier to touch and drag around an iPhone screen. It's small. You know where the borders are. And once you're in exploration mode or explore mode with the Vision Pro, it's head controlled, right? Um, but if you can't see, you don't know where the borders are. And sometimes there's a delay in if you turn your head too much of like a sound, it will give you like a sound alert. And then it will also just kind of freeze. And then you have to move your head all the way back near the middle of the app before it, it, there's a delay before it starts recognizing the contents of the app again. And then sometimes if you're using Zoom and VoiceOver, that alignment of where you're looking with Zoom and voiceover exploration, it gets unaligned. And sometimes it does a pretty good job of like trying to put that back together, but it can kind of get out of sync. Um, yeah. So with pointer control, I set mine to head control. So there's a little dot in the middle of the screen now, and it's not based on where my eyes are because that it just goes everywhere. <laughs> and you can actually make that pointer larger. Um, I tried the other ones when I was using Zoom. Uh, I tried the index finger one as well as the wrist one. But because I use Zoom a lot, um, the pointer would go out of my field of view since, you know, with Zoom, I can only see a small portion of the screen. And so it would get out of focus or somewhere else and I couldn't find it. It's kind of like how it's hard to find the mouse on the computer. <laughs> uh, let's see here. There's, uh, like I mentioned before, there's no way to turn completely turn off eye tracking. And for me, even with pointer control on, and set to head, it still tries to track your eyes and it gets just confused about it. Uh, so based on some of the videos that I've watched, you know, people like MKBHD or Marcus Brownlee and, and Linus from LTT, something that the Vision Pro does is it's extremely high resolution, but only where you're looking. So where you're not looking, it decreases the resolution. And even if you have pointer control set to head, even if you have zoom, it still does that. And so sometimes it gets a little shaky. It just looks weird. I don't know. I can't really see exactly what's happening. Um, but things kind of shift. Like sometimes the color shifts a little. That's what I can see. And it looks just a little like wonky. And I, I think that's part of what it is. And again, it's because of my nystagmus. And it's kind of pretty frustrating. And I wish there was a way to just even out the resolution all the time. And even if it's not set to the maximum resolution, because I know that could they're trying to reduce the... Um, the drain on the battery and the processing power that it takes. Um, or no, it's not resolution. It's Is it resolution or is it the frame rate? It may be both. I, I can't remember. Um, then Zoom. So I use Zoom a lot. You can choose window Zoom or full screen Zoom. And for the most part, I used full screen Zoom because... Windows Zoom is just too small. You can resize it, but I just much prefer Windows Zoom. It's a little bit like Zoom um, or magnifier on a phone or computer, except whereas you move the mouse or you have keyboard shortcuts and you're always have your head still and you're looking straight 
at the monitor and then moving the mouse. In this case, you're moving your head. Um, so Zoom, Zoom works great for apps. Again, it doesn't magnify the world around you. I really feel that it'd be great if it did. That would be amazing. Again, there's no magnifier. We can't, there's no magnifier apps either. And I did search for magnifier apps on the app store and you could get like an iPad app and it does not work. It's not compatible. Cameras just don't work from iPad apps like Be My Eyes. Uh, there's no seeing AI. I tried SuperSense. Does not work. Uh, so like I mentioned, uh, Zoom is head controlled, but the pointer is not. Um, so if you turn on Zoom, you'll still uh, want to change the pointer control um, if you don't want it to track your eyes for that. Um, <clears throat> Sometimes the little dot, the pointer, it kind of jumps its location a little based on head movement. So it's not perfect, but it does a pretty good job. Uh, another thing is <clears throat> if you're pretty low vision, you may really benefit from increased focus state. So it makes it so that when the pointer is... Uh, focused on something before you tap on it, uh, it puts a box around it. So if that's off, it just kind of changes it very minimally. And, you know, I suppose people who have good sight, they can tell the difference, but it was hard for me to tell without turning on the, the increased focus date thing. Uh, and you can use the zoom controller. It has a zoom controller <laughs> and it's, itself a little window that you can drag and move around and I kept losing it. It's the same thing with the iPhone. I always lose a zoom controller except that's on a what a six inch screen, 6.7 inch screen. Um, this I lose the zoom controller, you know, just 360 degrees all around me. I, I it's really annoying. Uh, there's also an option called use crown to control zoom. It's really confusing in the settings because it says double press the crown uh, and then rotate the crown when the crown is being used for other system settings. It's super confusing language. Uh, it took me forever to actually figure it out and it's also really buggy. So what you actually do is you have to turn the toggle on to uh, use crown to control zoom. And then you rotate the crown, so you, and then really fast, you press the crown one time. In my case, it's one time, sometimes it's two is what I understand. And then you rotate the crown again. So that will put you in the zoom controlling mode. Um, because otherwise, if you just rotate the crown, it changes your environment. Oh, I didn't even talk about that. You can make it so that you, it looks like you're in the mountains instead of seeing the world around you. It looks like you're in the mountains or on the beach in a snowy forest, things like that, which also you can't zoom into by the way. Uh, but back to the use crown to zoom, uh, it's really buggy because even when you're controlling the zoom, you're turning it, you're turning it and it will not zoom in as much as you can zoom. It can zoom out all the way, um, but if you try to zoom in uh, to the maximum, it won't. Oh, that that's another thing. In the settings, in the zoom settings, you would need to change your max zoom level. This is also something on iOS and iPad. Uh, you can change how much zoom you uh, that it can use. So I, I have mine turned up all the way to 10x. Um, and I don't always use it at 10x. But yeah, it's, it's helpful to have it that big because there are certain elements that even if you turn up the text size, it doesn't seem to get anywhere close to 
as big as like the settings or like some of the stock um, apps and stuff. There's also assistive touch and it's also a little floating window. And if you have zoom controller and assistive touch both on, uh, you know, it's like one window, which is kind of cool. That way, you know, you can lose both of them at the same time. <laughs> and there's also a sound actions. I, I found this pretty cool. So you, you can make different sounds like shh and have it do certain actions. And some of the actions worked and some of them didn't. Um, I couldn't get it to volume up or volume down. I could get it to do like a, a pinch, which is basically like a click. I could get it to do certain things, but I couldn't get it to open the control center, things like that. Speaking of the control center, the control center is this little tiny circle that floats above the rest of your app. So you're supposed to just look up and there's like a little dot and then you click on that or you tap on that or you activate that, whatever you want to call it. Um, and that's always hard to find for me. It's never seems to be in the same place and it, it's frustrating. I wish there was an option to make the control uh, control center larger. So my way around that was to use assistive touch. And so when I long or long press assistive touch, it would open the, um, the, uh, control center. I actually use Siri a lot. I tried to use Siri a lot to lower the volume, increase the volume. It was just a lot easier to use Siri than, uh, use the UI. So my thoughts and uh, impressions, I like it and I hate it. <laughs> I'm excited about the future. Uh, I think that a lot of the things are really cool. Uh, I actually think it's amazing. It feels really cool to have like these floating apps around you and make them really big. It's pretty, your Zoom is, usually pretty good. Uh, there's, again, like all the things that I mentioned that can be challenges, but once you're actually looking at something and you're at a good zoom level, everything's adjusted for you, you know, all you have to do is move your head and it has a really good gyroscope and can tell uh, and, and works really well, better than anything that I've tried in a way of other assistive technology wearables, particularly magnifiers. Uh, it does really well, except the my, my problem is that my head gets tired. I kind of get tired of moving my head all over the place. And like, you know, once you're doing it a whole bunch, especially at higher magnification levels, you'll start to get a little dizzy. <laughs> at least I did. <laughs> and so I'd like, go and start using um, voiceover. But the thing is, the biggest drawback, like I mentioned, is that I hate even thinking about putting it on. It's just not comfortable. It gives me a headache, it hurts my eyes, and I don't like it. <sighs> I just think that Apple really needs to um, figure out a way to make it more comfortable. Now, I'm not... <sighs> You know, I could even live with the battery. You know, it would be annoying. Um, you know, that's always going to be annoying, but I could live with that. But I can't really see myself using this to be productive because of how uncomfortable it is. It's extremely uncomfortable, <laughs> especially for a longer periods of time. And my, my eyes do get tired of looking straight at the screen. It's just a few centimeters away from your eyes. And it's great. I can see it really well, but I get kind of tired of it. Um, it's also not very bright. I wish Apple would put the magnifier, things like detection mode, OCR, and allow third-party apps to use the, the camera. This is a first-gen product, so there's a lot more that Apple can do, and I hope that they continue improving it. Um, and it kind of feels like it needs more stuff to do on it. That's something that I've heard from other creators. Um, there are certain games, like there's like one that's like uh, encountering dinosaurs. Uh, it was really hard to see that one, and it wouldn't. 
it was hard. Uh, I had a hard time with that one, maybe because I'm just really blind. Uh, it sounded really cool, and I could kind of see the dinosaurs, but in the videos that I've seen, like, people have, like, these little butterflies or, like, these little flying dinosaurs. I, I don't really know what it was, and they can land on your finger. I couldn't see it. I couldn't find them, <laughs> and uh, I'm trying to figure out what it could be useful for. This is a question um, Scar uh, sent me on Discord, and I've been thinking, like, why, what makes this better to use than the tech that we already have? Like our computers and our phones. Yeah, it's hands-free. Uh, and let's say it was really comfortable. Let's say it was really light and really comfortable. Um, I don't know. I think I'll have to give it another week and just keep playing with it. And uh, I'll have to see. <laughs> That's my answer. <laughs> so anyway, I've been talking for a long time. Uh, and now I'm going to go ahead and just go back up to the top of the live chat. Again, if you have any questions about anything that I talked about, um, put them in the live chat and hopefully uh, help add a question mark um, in the front. That would be really great. Uh, all right. So how much... Co oh, oh, I don't have any coffee in my water bottle, but um, let's continue. Let's see. Oh, here. Tough Beefong wants to know, were you able to figure out how to use the keyboard? Yes, I was able to, uh, uh, to figure that out. I did figure out how to use it with voiceover. I can go to explore mode. I could also use dictation, though that doesn't work with passwords, right? Uh, you could also connect a Bluetooth keyboard to it, um, which I haven't tried. I just pretty much stayed away from the keyboard, honestly, um, because it is it takes longer. Okay, so let's see here. It's, uh, uh, how is voiceover on it? Okay, yeah. Um, I think I answered this question. I stuck with Samantha. I didn't change the voice, and I'll probably try to change voices this week, um, this next week. And I didn't really notice a whole lot of lag. Uh, there were some stutters occasionally, but I was using... Typically when that would happen is if I'm using voiceover and Zoom and, um, you know, have a few apps open. That's what I noticed. Um, you know, it's... Sometimes there would be times it would not recognize the gesture. That was a little frustrating. Um, but I don't know. It may have been that there wasn't enough light or my hand wasn't in the right place. I don't know. Um, but, you know, once it recognizes your hands and it's mapping your hands, you know, it works pretty well. Blind toes, how comfortable is, is it? Uh, it's not. I'm pretty sure I answered that question. <laughs> so a little snow fairy saga. The foveated eye tracking on PSVR 2 doesn't work for me. Yeah. Yep. Tried the Apple Vision Pro in an Apple store, and it could not accurately track my lazy eyes. I was extremely disappointed. Yes. And so that's where pointer control uh, helps. And then you can kind of just manually control it. Uh, blind toes. <laughs> okay, we'll skip that. A little snow fairy. Hand tracking works better. I don't want it to track my hands. I can do that on Quest 3 already. Yeah, um, another thing, I tried the index finger as well as the wrist. And sometimes if you're using that for pointer control and trying to navigate like um, the UI with your wrist or your index finger, you kind of want to use your other hand for that. 
uh, like your left hand, maybe if you're right handed and because, you know, if you're trying to use the same hand for the for the clicking and activating things as the tracking the pointer control, then it gets really confused and it's tracking your index finger or your wrist and you make the gesture and those conflict. Not worth $3,500 for the VR headset. Uh, for me, it doesn't. You're right. Uh, Little Snow Fairy says that. There's no controller to play games, which is by far the biggest drawback for me. So if you want to use this for games, that's not... I don't think that's what Apple really envisioned the Vision Pro <laughs> To do. A lot of people are using this for productivity for their MacBooks, like a basically a head monitor that they can just put on their face and uh, use. And they could have, you know, their MacBook monitor and then other apps. You can only do one, like a virtual desktop thing um, for a MacBook. And no, it doesn't work on PC, which is pretty sad. Let's see. Um, but if it's for games, you know, another VR headset would probably be better. <laughs> uh, Jordan says, uh, what does it do? Yeah, so I'm pretty sure I did answer that earlier. So hopefully you were able to. Uh, hear that little. You can create an avatar to make people see you. It's a representation of you, not your actual face. Yes, that's exactly what it is. Um, I did not do that. You know, I don't. Uh, it just wasn't worth it for me to do it yet. I will wait for a consumer friendly $99 model. <laughs> with controllers. I don't think it will ever be $99, but I could see it being $999. Oh, yeah. Okay. So you corrected yourself. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Hello. Uh, they couldn't include chat GPT so that it does the job of be my eyes even better thanks to its quality camera. So yeah, but you can't really use its cameras for anything except for capturing uh, recordings. Like, I did not see any apps that use the camera except for that. Jordan says, um, I can't, I had such a belief vision. Uh, I'm not sure what you're saying there. Uh, always have to do things the hard way. Yes, I do. Yeah, I remember that. Did you ever end up figuring out how to properly use the keyboard? Oh, yeah. Okay, so I did answer that. Uh, so true. That's what I've been saying, Carrie. Yeah, huge problem. Uh, yeah, I, I wish I had somebody who could help me with chat. Um, I thought you were able to stop the eye tracking by closing your eyes. Yeah, so... Another thing that I didn't mention earlier is you can close your eyes um, and it seems to work better. It stops it. But like, you know, you're using a headset. You know, I kind of want to have my eyes open. It was really hard to do that. I, I was so tempted that like when I had voiceover on, I wish I could just take off the headset and then like gesture around without the headset on and just listen to voiceover or even like just lift the goggles up or the goggles the the vision pro up like above my eyes and kind of have it rest on my head but anytime you take it off it goes into sleep mode and you can't do anything you have to have it on and it's also really frustrating to not know what other people are doing or seeing in the headset. Um, when I was trying to explain it to my sister or my niece or nephew, I'm like, okay, what do you see? Like, you, they have to verbalize what they see. It's like no easy way to share that experience. 
Well, he says, I wonder how the screen is because a lot of people have been saying that it's the best part. So the screen, the screen is pretty good. It is the best screen that I've experienced on a headset, uh, particularly when it comes to AT uh, headset and assistive technology ones like like eSight and um, Iris Vision and uh, eSight VR, like those uh, magnifier types of headsets. I haven't tried the Quest Pro, but by the specs, it is uh, a lot better. And um, I would say it's pretty bright. However, it kind of darkens the room. When it comes to apps and things like that, it's it's bright enough and it will be at a certain level. But if you're walking around, it kind of darkens the room. If I look at a light, you know, it tries to gray that out so that it doesn't glare. Expensive headset dumbbell. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see here. I wonder how the... Oh, I read that one. All VR, are, all VR headsets are heavy at the front. Yeah, but this is heavier. This is heavier and everything is at the front. Um, also, just the whole thing is not comfortable. I don't need to... Oh, wait. I don't tend to get headaches or dizziness in VR personally. So it's not the VR. For me, it's the moving my head around with zoom at such high levels and then how uncomfortable this particular one is. I remember trying out the other ones, like other uh, 18 months, and those didn't really give me headaches. Um, question three, is not nearly as heavy as Vision Pro. Oh, Quest 3 is not nearly as heavy as Vision Pro. I'm not a fan of wired VR headsets like this or PSVR 2, but I tolerate them. Yeah, and, uh, to a bunch of blind people in the chat, she holds up and dis uh, displays for a size comparison, the battery and a phone. Yeah, well, you can still get an idea. I'm telling you um, verbally what I'm doing, you know? <laughs> That's why I'm glad I didn't buy it uh, at the Apple store. Yes. Um, I, I feel like that was a good decision. Am I new to VR? Yes, I'm new to mainstream VR. Just think of them like keyboard shortcuts. Since you want all the keyboard shortcuts, that means you should want all the gestures as well. I actually got excited when I went to voiceover and there's like a place where you can customize gestures. Uh, I was look, I looked through each and every one and it was pretty cool. There's like three finger pinches and all this all these uh, other things you could do. And I was like, oh, cool. You know, I was like tempted to go in there and start like activating and like setting up actions for them. More complicated gestures just for a headset. Yeah, uh, Joshua, why can't they just use normal iPhone voiceover gestures? Why make, well, I don't know how you would do normal voiceover gestures when you don't have a screen uh you know that that would be really hard to track like wh where are you supposed to double tap just in the air uh, or or on your lap uh, i don't think that the cameras or anything would really have an easy time to kind of track that and then it would also feel weird the when you don't have a tactile feedback to actually uh you know, do those types of gestures. Ah, oh, the chat jumped. I, I lost it. Hold on. I think, um, here, I think the Apple Vision Pro is mostly made to be sat down with not uh, standing up. Yeah, um, you know, People apparently use it 
even to drive a Tesla, apparently somebody did. Uh, there's a lot of people walking around with these. And actually, I felt like I could walk around with it in pass-through mode without any like floating apps. Um, not super comfortably, but you know, I felt like I could do it. Uh, <laughs> with the wire and battery absolutely meant to be used sitting down. Uh, yeah. What's the gesture to make voiceover shut up? Uh, I think it is the middle finger on your left hand pinch. Or is it on the right hand? <laughs> I think that's kind of funny. It's, uh, it's called foveated rendering. There you go. Exactly. Thank you. That's exactly right. Can't even play Beat Saber. Oh, on the Vision Pro, no, you can't. Uh, there are some knockoff ones as well. I'm going to have to go. Oh, okay. Yeah. It sounds like you need the haptic gloves from Ready Player One. I would love the haptic gloves from Ready Player One. Um, <laughs> let's see, Marvin. How does voiceover work? Okay, so um, how do you make voiceover stop talking on it? Okay, so I I answered that. I don't know about that. With five coffee makers in your house, there can't be anything that uh, but coffee in your water bottle. Very funny. All right, so really quick, I've already answered this, uh, Marvin. How does voiceover work? But you basically triple press the crown at setup. If you don't do it at setup, you'll have to go through settings and an accessibility and turn on turn that on or just ask Siri. Uh, and then you use gestures with your hands. You want to hold your hands kind of like you're holding a cup. And then you can put your index finger and thumb together for next item. Um, that's called a pinch. And then uh, your middle finger and thumb pinch would be previous. And then on your right hand, this is all on your right hand. And then a right hand, ring finger to thumb uh, pinch to activate, activate items. And then there's a lot of other gestures and two-handed gestures like changing the rotor would be a uh, left hand, they call it the modifier. Uh, you pinch that together and you keep it like that while you do the next and previous uh, gestures on your right hand. So that's a little bit of how, uh, how that works. So, how gestures, wait, I wonder how games for the blinds work on Vision Pro. I have not found any any games um, on it, honestly, or I haven't tried any of them. Does Siri work well on the Apple Vision Pro? Yes, it does. Actually, I, I use it a lot. I use it a lot to say um, things like, you know, volume up, volume down, search things, open things. Uh, it was definitely easier to use voiceover to like open things um, than try to go around uh, the UI and try to find things, you know. And that was pretty easy. Dictation does uh, pretty well on the Vision Pro and the sound the sound that has probably my one of my favorite things on there on the Vision Pro. The spatial audio is pretty cool. I like that one. But yeah, those are my first impressions. I'm still going to go and play with it for uh, the next week and uh, see how how I feel about it. <laughs> in another week. <laughs> but thanks everybody for uh, joining me. That's pretty much it for this one. And again, if you, you know, if you like this type of content, and if you want to know more and see my final review, I'll probably have that out in probably the next two weeks. Um, and yeah, thanks so much for joining and I will catch you guys next time.